That's our guy. There's the guy that stole my bike. You might be asking, how did my bike get stolen? How did I track it down? How did I find this dude? Well, hold your horses, or bikes. We'll get to that in a bit. Disclaimer, do not try to chase the guy who stole your bike or do anything in this video, honestly. The best course of action is to call the police and file a report. And if you haven't had your bike stolen, register it with its serial number and buy a good lock. So, this is my bike. It's a hardtail style mountain bike manufactured by Diamondback, which is a pretty well-respected name in the mountain bike space. Now, this bike is not a high-end bike. High-end mountain bikes can cost tens of thousands of dollars. However, this bike still costs a pretty penny and it means a lot to me. I take decent care of it, it's always oiled up, and it provides a nice, smooth riding experience. But yeah, this bike was pretty cool. And I had some attachments on it, like a bell and this rear rack, which you might want to remember for later. And somewhere hidden on this bike was an air tag. Partially because I was scared of thieves, but mostly because I didn't want to forget where I parked my bike. Anyways, I went to uni, and this bike came along with me. I would ride it to all my classes. Things were going great, honestly. But one day, basically I had it locked up outside a building, had my morning classes, then I walked over to get food at a different building and study with a friend. And at this point, it's around two o'clock, so I walked back to grab my bike from the original building I had parked it at, and lo and behold, the thing wasn't there. So I'm like, shoot, maybe I parked it somewhere and just forgot about it. So I checked the AirTag's location. Tell me why it's six kilometers away in some random neighborhood. So I'm like, crap, my bike is stolen. My heart's racing. It's as if a thousand daggers had been plunged to my chest. It's beating like a washing machine and I didn't know what to do, so I broke down on the spot and cried. No, I'm just kidding. I decided to look for buses that would take me to the bike's location, or I was going to, because I realized that this guy was moving really fast. He was like Lightning McQueen. He was now at the nearby college, and I was starting to think, oh god, I'm cooked. So I walked back to my dorm because I was not about to confront a thief with my laptop and my iPad on my back. So on the way, I also called the police, not 911, but the non-emergency number. They told me to write an accident report, but they wouldn't help with actually getting the bicycle, even though I told them I had a tracker on it. So I decided I just grabbed the bike myself. I was gonna steal that thing back. I asked my dad to drive over, but he was gonna take a bit. So part of me thought, what if I just used the school's rideshare bikes and chased the guy? But it quickly dawned on me that these things aren't built for speed. They're more for like, oh, I'm gonna get my groceries, not, oh, I'm gonna chase a bike thief on this thing. Now, remember before when I said that I took decent care of my bike and that it's always oiled up and whatnot? Well, I kinda lied. It was decently maintained, but I neglected one important aspect, which was the AirTag battery. Ever since I installed the AirTag, I hadn't changed the battery in the thing because it was hidden in this really inconvenient spot and I was kinda lazy. As a result, the AirTag was like an underfed, shriveled up little thing and it was well past overdue for a battery replacement. And these things are meant to have their batteries replaced like every year. I hadn't replaced mine for two. So I was cooked. And the Find My app did give me a low battery reading, but it didn't tell me how long the battery would last or how much percentage was in the actual battery. But the ghost of Steve Jobs must have been with me or something because damn things still worked. And now was my only hope. The fact that my AirTag was at low battery and could die at any point added more pressure to the situation. The clock was ticking. My dad came and the thief was at Costco, or he was at some point. Guess even he didn't want to miss out on their free samples. It was a bit tricky trying to track him down because the AirTag location update was delayed when, all of a sudden, right as we were pulling up to the Costco, it updated to the pharmacy place near Costco. So we went there. And there, parked next to a tree, was my bike. I couldn't believe I actually found the damn thing. Everything was there, including my rear rack. My helmet and lock were nowhere to be seen though, but he probably just cut through the lock. The guy himself was nowhere to be seen, so I walked up to the bike and my heart sank as I saw a giant U-lock holding the bike hostage to the tree. Guess I had no chance of stealing the bike back. It was very disappointing, very soul crushing. It's not very demure. So I admitted defeat, threw in the towel and went to Costco in search of a new bike. One point to the thief and zero points for me. The end. Just kidding. Now, before we went off to Costco, I wanted to do a bit of trolling after I realized that I couldn't unlock the bike. It was the least I could do if I couldn't get my bike back. So I left a note written on an envelope and tied it to the bike using the strap of a mask. I wrote, I know you stole this bike with a smiley face. Hopefully, it would freak the guy out, because imagine stealing a bike and just a couple hours later, you see a note like that appear on the bike you stole. We went to Costco to see if there were any cheapish bikes that could do the job, but there weren't any, so... I wanted to go back and camp at the bike to see if the guy would freak out at the note or not. I kinda wanna see his reaction, you know, because, like, he's taking my bike. The least I could do is get some entertainment out of it. And hey, maybe he'd be scared enough and leave the bike there unlocked. Kinda delusional, but it was a possibility. While we were there, we also tried giving emergency services a call again because we could now literally see the bike in front of us, like, but not much development happened there. We waited for only a couple minutes in our car before this guy starts walking towards the bike and we knew that was the guy. That's our guy. That's our guy. That's our guy. 
right there. The guy walked up to the bike, glanced at the note we left him, and just ripped it off. He unlocked the bike and started riding off with it. He also seemed to have someone else's backpack. I mean, who carries around two backpacks? So we chased the guy in our car, which is a lot harder than you expect because you can't be too fast that you pass the bike, but you can't be so slow that you're holding up traffic. It was like GTA, but a lot less cool. And honestly, that guy was pretty fast considering the fact that he was going uphill at some point and like holding someone like he was holding two backpacks. And while we chased the dude, I called 911 on one phone while filming with my dad. Now I'm just going to interrupt the video by saying, please don't do this. It's, it's really stupid. Don't chase the guy who has your bike, especially if you don't know if he has a weapon or not. This guy could have had a knife, he could have had a gun, he could have blown my brains out. Your best course of action is calling the cops and letting them deal with it because they're actually trained to do this stuff. You're a kid who got his bike stolen. And especially if you have a serial number, then you have a pretty fair shot at getting your bike back. So please don't chase a bike thief. If they're comfortable stealing someone's bike, you don't know what else they're capable of. Let the cops deal with it. Don't do what I did because I was being really stupid and really irresponsible. Anyways, the Grand Theft Auto chase continued until we eventually lost sight of the guy and unfortunately my phone glitched out and because of that I couldn't see the location of the air tag and so I had to get off the phone with 911 and then I could get into my phone and then track the air tag and we stayed in the area for a bit because they were sending some people over to look in the area and the operator told us to stay there so we kind of did now this guy was going all over the place he was going through a plaza onto a road into a neighborhood back into a different plaza eventually an officer did call shout out to him he's really friendly and he said he'd keep an eye out for it since he was working till 4 a.m he gave me his email he told me to email him all the details and keep him updated so i went back to my dorm and did just that and i also submitted the police report online finally that night i kept checking the location of the bike it was going all over the place he zipped around into the night and the little air tag just kept sending me his location ping 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 finally settling down at this location the next day i checked my air tag and it was exactly where it was at last night and it occurred to me that hey maybe he abandoned the bike and it was just sitting there all alone in the rain waiting for me to pick it up Wednesday and Thursday passed and the bike remained there in that location, so there were a couple of possibilities. One, the bike was there and unlocked, ready for me to take home. Really hope it was that one. Two, the bike was there but it was locked. Three, the bike was there but it had been ravaged for parts. And four, the bike wasn't there and the thief found the air tag and just chucked it onto the ground. So on Friday, my dad came to pick me up. I was heading home for the weekend anyways, so we thought, hey, might as well check the bike location, right? We got there and at first we couldn't see anything. The bike racks in front of the store looked empty. But then I got out of the car, walked around the corner of the store and lo and behold, it was my bike. And it was unlocked, which was the best part. The rear rack was stolen, which was a bit of a bummer because that thing was kind of expensive and it was a pretty nice rack too. Like you could fit a whole person on it, but the bike was back and so we took it home. And when I got home, I gave it some well-needed TLC. I washed the thing, got some new handlebars since the old ones were real worn out and finally replaced the AirTag battery and gave it the fresh one it deserved. Because without that AirTag, I wouldn't even know where I'd be right now or I guess where the bike would be. And we also have to shout out the note I left on the bike since it might've made the guy question himself and whether or not he should keep using the bike. But the most important thing is that I got my bike back. One point for me. The guy did steal my helmet, my lock, and my rack though, so. There's a couple lessons to be learned here. One, put air tags on your stuff. I mean, without the air tag, this whole chase would not have been possible and my bike would have been long gone. Second, don't track down your stolen bike yourself. The only reason I tracked my bike down and retrieved it myself was because it had been sitting there for a couple days, so I had reason to believe it was abandoned and it was in a plaza where there's lots of people. Now I got lucky because sometimes these people might take them into encampments of homeless people where they're these so-called chop shops for bicycles and it would be incredibly dangerous to walk into one by yourself. Like, what are you gonna do, ask for the bike back? Yo, give me my bike back. Oh, my bad, here you go. Sorry for stealing it, man. So if you have the location of your bike but don't know how safe it is, Get the police to look there for you. No matter how much the bike cost, your life is worth more. And third, buy a good lock. If you spend a thousand dollars on your bike, you shouldn't be using a dinky ten dollar cable lock to keep it safe. Someone can just take that and snip it in five seconds using some garden pliers. Get a nice U lock or even multiple locks. A general rule of thumb is that you should spend ten percent of your bike's value on locking it up. And even then, locking your bike isn't a guarantee that the bike won't get stolen. My bike was locked near a very busy intersection, near a university building, lots of people passing by there, and it still got stolen. This guy had his very own lock ready, so he was probably prepared. It only takes an angle grinder to get through even the toughest of locks. So yeah, lock your bike and keep an eye on it. As for me, I think the best way to prevent my bike from getting stolen is to have this piece of junk. No one in their right mind would steal this. I literally picked this up at a city junkyard where they were giving away free bikes. The chain falls off so often that I've learned how to put it back on without needing to stop and get off the bike, but hey, it works. It does all the bike things I needed to do. 
and my actual nice bike, it's chilling at home for now, far away from all this action. But yeah, that's about it for this stinky video. If you watched till the end, then you should consider liking the video and subscribing. If you've ever had your bike stolen or have a similar story, let me know in the comments below. All right, be awesome and stay techy. And I was like, oh shoot, I'm cooked. Hello there. <laughs>